Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can add interactive 3D objects to your Wix website. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I am in Wix Studio and I created a very simple section here. And I do wanna preface this video by letting you know that what I'm about to teach you will also work in the regular Wix editor. It's not just Wix Studio, um, but for today's 3D program of choice, we are gonna be using something called Spline. And Spline is basically like the Figma of 3D program. It's basically a 3D program for people that do not know 3D programs, and it's super powerful and intuitive. Now, in the description, I am gonna leave a link to this video, and it's about a two and a half hour free course with everything you need to know about creating and launching your own 3D objects in Spline. Now for today's video, we are not going to be creating our own because inside of Spline, there are plenty of community assets that we can use as well. But once you create an account in Spline, you should land on a page that looks like this. And you can see right here, there are plenty of tutorials and examples of assets you can use. And then if we scroll down, there's even community assets that you can use as well. Now to view more community assets, you can head on over to the community tab in the left menu and head on over to explore. Here you can see thousands of assets or 3D objects that have been published for us to be able to use on our websites or projects. Now for today's video, I'm just gonna head up to the top and we'll just choose this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and then we'll have an option to remix it. So let's go ahead and press remix. But once you click remix, it's gonna open up a brand new tab that looks like this. And what you're gonna notice is there's gonna be a large red area around it, and that's our frame. So if you're used to Figma and frames, basically this area is our editing frame and everything outside of it isn't. However, we're gonna to want to edit that because we're gonna be putting this 3D object on a responsive website. So what we're gonna do is go over to edit frame and over in the size, you can see right now we have a custom size of 1200 by 1200. What we're gonna want to do instead is actually switch this over to a responsive size, just like this. And we can even do auto zoom if we wanted to. And then we can go ahead and exit out. Now, what I will say is this object is huge. So what we're gonna do is come over to the layers panel and select the cube element. And we're gonna want to edit the size by editing, by changing the scale right over here. Let's start by actually locking it so that way it scales proportionately. And we're gonna go ahead and set this to like 0.4. So it's gonna be quite a bit smaller. But once we are happy with this object and its size, let's go ahead and press export. Now, what we're gonna want to do is actually switch over to the viewer tab. And this is the code that we're gonna want to grab right here. But before we do that, let's actually start by coming over to the play settings and editing some of this. The first thing I wanna mention is for the logo, since we are on a free plan, the logo will appear on the website. If we select no, it's gonna prompt you to sign up for their paid plans, which yearly it's nine bucks a month and monthly it's 12 bucks. So it's up to you if you want to do that. I do think if you plan to put a lot of 3D objects on your website, this is probably gonna be the best way to go. And honestly, if you are planning to have one 3D object on your website, to keep consistency on your website, it might be good to just sprinkle a few more 3D objects on your website hopefully in the same style, that would probably be the best. But for today's tutorial, I'm gonna say maybe later and we'll just deal with the logo. Underneath that, we have the option for background color on whether we want to show or hide it. Personally, I think I want to hide it, so I'll select that option. For page scroll and cursor, we're gonna leave this as yes in default. We want to allow people to be able to like hover over the object for their cool orbiting effect, but we don't want the cursor to disappear and we don't want that to prevent them from being able to scroll down on your website. Underneath that, we have orbit, pan, zoom, and soft orbit. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off all of these. These kind of allow your user to kind of do the orbiting pan and zoom and soft orbit features that we can do here in the spline editor. And we don't really want our users to be able to do that. We want to control the effect a little bit more. And because we turned all of these off, we don't need to worry about the touch settings, so we'll just scroll past that. 
But what I do want to turn on is the on hover effect here. And we'll also go ahead and say reset if hover out. I'm going to set this to no reset. And we'll also turn on orbit limits. So maybe instead of 45, we can set all of these to like 15. And you can go through all of these other settings if you want to kind of really customize the effect that you're going to give your users. But for now, I think I am happy. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and press update viewer. And I'm going to switch over to the overview tab and I'm going to copy this embed. Now let's head back over to Wix Studio and I'm going to add an iframe into this cell over here on the right and we'll go ahead and stretch it. Let's press enter code and we'll paste in the code and press update. And as soon as I do that, you're going to immediately notice that the animation starts to play. And if I actually go ahead and press preview, you'll notice that as I'm hovering over the iframe, it's actually rotating the 3D object. And I think that's really cool. And of course you will also notice the built-in spline little logo down here. Again, if you have a paid plan and you turn off the logo, you will not see this. But what I will say is right here, maybe I made it a little too small. So if I head back over to spline and I grab the cube, Maybe we can lock the scale again and set this to 0.5 and make it a little bit bigger. Then we can head back over into the export and press update. And once that's done, we can head back over to the editor. Typically just to get a fresh restart, I will click the embed, press edit code and re-update it just to kind of update it a little bit quicker. And then once I go preview again, it is gonna be a little bit bigger. But that's basically going to wrap it up for today's cool little video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.